Hi there! Welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie, episode 199, about 30 minutes and change late, well where you're watching from. I'm Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the U.S., and I'm coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. Let's say hello to a few folks. Hello, Karen, Christina, Kathy. Hi, Elise. Pink Flamingo Day. Hi, Corinne. Alicia, Judy, Wanda, welcome. Hi, Susan. Oh, you guys are all teed up and ready to go. I love it. <laughs> Total chaos today. I had a project in my mind and then the measurements weren't working out. It's just one of those days, but I am excited to show you tonight's project. It's slightly unfinished, but I'm sure by the time I do a YouTube tutorial or the projects post to my blog, I will have tweaked it just slightly, but the measurements are good. I probably will decorate it a little bit more, but it is a, um, a 3D box. Actually, I can show you really quickly. And the lid opens to reveal um, four, I did a set of four of mini three by three cards. And that's featuring the all squared away or bundle. I love that bundle. It's perfect for three by three cards. And I haven't been making as many three by three cards these days because we haven't been leaving the house that much. But one of my favorite things to do with three by threes is to have them ready to go for random acts of kindness, whether that be somebody at the drive through or the grocery store or the post office and just have a little note. I'll show you the card up close. It's plain on the front and on the inside. I love the sentiment for random acts of kindness. The best thing about today is you. So that's really awesome. I love these cards. They're very easy to go together and you can tweak obviously the way the outside of the box looks and all that good stuff. So let's talk about a couple of housekeeping items. Tomorrow is a really exciting day in Stampin' Up's world. Free shipping on orders of $50 or more. That does not happen very often. Now we did just have a free shipping day. I think it was back in March, but that is a rare occurrence. So tomorrow all day from 12 o'clock a.m. Mountain Time to 11.59 p.m. Mountain Time, free shipping on orders of $50 or more. If you'd like to shop with me, you can shop with me at thepaperpixie.com shop. And the really cool part about that $50 threshold is when you shop with me, you also will earn if you spend an order of 50, if you place an order of $50 or more, you'll earn this month's free gift and let me show you that really quickly here. I do have a monthly host code I'd love for you to use. Where is my host code? Here it is. <laughs> H R S T C P K E. And if your order is $50 or more, why would it not be because you want to get the free shipping? My free gifts or the choices for my free gifts for the month are the is Terran tape, the pretty flowers embossing folder, or the simply elegant trim. So you get to choose one of those three for your gift for the month of June. And so free shipping tomorrow. The mini catalog is officially retiring as of next Wednesday. So I'll talk about it one more time on episode number 200. Um, but the last chance items list is available. All of those items are while supplies last, and there's quite a few that are discounted up to 50%. And let's see, if you don't already have a demonstrator, you haven't shopped with me in a while, and you'd like complimentary copies of the current catalogs, you can submit a catalog request at thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. I think, I'm trying to think if there was any other promotions. Tomorrow's the biggest one. I've already got a big list ready to put in an order to take advantage of free shipping. The greatest thing about free shipping, obviously, is the free part, but Stampin' Up! shipping policy is $6.95 up to $69.50. So if your order $69.50 or less, it's $6.95. And then after that, it's 10% of your order. So it's really like a 10% discount on the entire store that free shipping will kick in on orders of $50 or more. So I love free shipping. It's gonna be a busy day tomorrow, which is good. And I think I've got two things to show you from the kids. They picked a couple things to show you and <laughs> they're hiding over here. Brian hasn't seen what the kids have chosen. My husband, Brian, is sitting over here to my left watching for your questions. So he'll pop your questions up. 
We're going to do a live prize patrol drawing at the end of tonight's broadcast. And I haven't picked what the prize patrol is yet, but it'll be a free stamp set. <laughs> I just don't know what stamp set yet. I've got a prize patrol drawer behind me, so we will pick it quickly. Um, I think that is it. If you have any questions, reach out. You can always get all my information at thepaperpixie.com or the description of this video. I've got links to lots of great things. So let me go ahead and flip the camera here. That hopefully it's, let's try that one more time. There we go. <laughs> Oh, today was just one of those days, you know, sometimes you can't control your schedule when you've got a family and a job and all that good stuff. And, you know, the mojo's got to strike. You all know how that goes. So this is the project. It's pretty plain on the outside. Now, this is Poppy Parade, even though it's looking um, in to me, it's looking a little bit more pinkish, almost like a lovely lipstick. But it's that beautiful Poppy Parade. And let's see, let's grab Nolan's artwork. Nolan is my five-year-old. He's been having fun tracing. So this was the image that he chose to show us. He was tracing with markers today and filled in his tracing. And I'm not sure what's going on on this side. He said that this was the start of a T-Rex. He is dino obsessed. So I love that. And then Lily put together a little Lego thing today. I'm going to see if I can hold things into place. She gave an explanation. She has an amazing imagination, but she said that this little gear thing apparently hides what's behind the door and what's behind the door is a magic pearl. I don't know if you can see that. It's sitting right there in that sort of lotus flower. So that's what Lily chose to show you all today. Love it. And I was frantically cutting all my paper beforehand. I have one more piece to cut. We'll do that now because we're going to start with the box. Now, apologies, I do not have a template to show you during tonight's live, but make sure you watch the replay, or not the replay, the recorded version of this tutorial. That's going to post to my blog on Friday. There will be a template. I will show a template during that recording, as well as a template on my blog on Friday. Tomorrow's blog post at thepaperpixie.com will be the scoop on these adorable cards. So easy to make. We're going to make those tonight as well. And I think you can fit more than four cards and four envelopes for sure. I get this question a lot about how I made the envelopes. I did not make them stamp and upmate them. And actually, you may have missed them, but they are in the catalog. We've got the three mini three by three envelopes. They're already ready to go. They've got adhesive on them. You cannot mail these, but they are perfect for giving out as a random act of kindness or a gift enclosure. I love these. They come in a pack of 50, I believe. And these cards are just a simple six by three scored in half at three. So you can actually get three of these out of a sheet of eight and a half by 11 with some extra to spare that you can save in your um, scraps for another project. But I just love the all squared away bundle. Let me show you the stamp set. Here's the all squared away stamp set. So you've got some really great patterned backgrounds that perfectly fit behind these frames. And the frames we're using tonight, but there's also some fe um, feather, flower accessories that go with it. But these are the frames. They're pretty much all ready to go. It cuts the outside and the inside of the frame. So you can have a lot of fun with putting the stamped images behind the flowers. Um, actually, I want to show you my inspiration for tonight. If I can find it. My up, up line, Pam, and Pam, if you're watching, she made this sweet card for me to congratulate, to congratulate me on a great celebration. But I love how she added the strips behind it. So... This paper is the pattern party paper, has the same effect, diagonal, but with less work. <laughs> I almost did this for you tonight, but obviously was, I was running out of time. But pattern party is one of the host choices for orders of $150 or more. So if you really want to take advantage of the free shipping tomorrow and you place a $150 order, you're going to save $15 on shipping and you will earn stamp and rewards to spend that you can actually spend on this pattern party paper. And I cannot remember how many designs are in this, but you get 48 sheets of 12 by 12. 
It's $18 in Stampin' Rewards. But these patterns are awesome. They go with all of the sweets in the annual catalog. And it is a fun paper to play with. You've got black and white sides and colored sides. This is one of my other favorite patterns as well. So don't forget when you earn stamp rewards on orders of 150 or more, you can use those to purchase the host items and they've never offered paper before. So that is really, really cool. So let's put these away and get started on the box. And let's hope that Julie can remember how she put the box together. <laughs> Oh goodness, I'm gonna put these here for now. We'll come back to those and cut them. And so that's the all squared away bundle. It's towards the end of the annual catalog, so you may have missed it, but I absolutely love these frames. Lots of fun things you can do with them. I love the white with a pop of color behind it, but this, I actually made little mini note cards for my product shares this go round, and I did polished pink, I believe, and basic black. Really, really pretty those colors together as well. All right, I'm going to cut. That's not my paper trimmer. That's my Simply Scored. You're gonna want two pieces of cardstock. In this case, we're using Poppy Parade, seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter. So you are gonna need two sheets of cardstock, but cardstock's cheap. So seven and a quarter. You're gonna need to open your arm for that measurement by seven and a quarter. Or you could subtract from eight and a half and buy 11 if you didn't want to use the arm. Sometimes I do that because I can be a lazy math calculator, I guess. <laughs> All right. Totally didn't write these measurements down, but they're in my head. So we're going to start with one piece. We're going to score these slightly differently. I think if I can remember. All right. So this is a square, seven and a quarter inches square. We're going to score at three quarters from each side. Or you could do three quarters and four. Three and a quarter. Oh gosh, three and a quarter. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I, I, I would have messed that up if Brian weren't here. That's awesome. So three and a quarter, three and a quarter, or three and a quarter and four. You're going to have this three quarter inch strip down the center. Okay. Then we are going to do three and a quarter and six and a half. Okay, I'm going to repeat this on the other piece, but I'm going to show you we're going to do one differently than the other. So we're repeating the same. Whoa, that's eight and a half by that's not the right piece. <laughs> it's over here. <laughs> oh, good grief. Okay, three and a quarter. Rotate. Three and a quarter. Oops, I jumped the track there. Then three and a quarter, six and a half. Not six and a quarter. All right, so those both started off the same. I think they're gonna be basically the same, I'm thinking here. All right, so the orientation of this, we've got our three quarter inch section or that smaller section at the bottom, okay? We've got the center sort of three quarter inch channel in the middle. I'm going to come down and we're going to score at two and three quarters, but we're going to stop at that first horizontal score line. And again, apologies that I don't have a um, template for you. And then we're going to do four and a half, stopping at that score line. So that's basically giving us this little half inch channel in this upper section. Now this is going to start to look a little bit similar to that succulent candle. Um, gift box that I had made. It's a similar, it's not a square, but it's a similar orientation. So I'm going to rotate it 180 to where we've got our three quarter inch section along the top. And for this one, I am going to score at two and a half because we want this to be three quarters and four and three quarters. So slight difference on the short one. We stopped again at that horizontal score line. So let me repeat that. Two and three quarters, stop the score line. Four and a half, stop at the score line. Rotate at 180, we're doing two and a half, stop at the score line, four and three quarters. So we've got three quarter inch sections here, 
half inch sections here. Okay, I'm actually gonna do the exact same thing. Probably could have done that all at once, right? So two and three quarters, stop at the score line. Four and a half, stop at the score line. Rotate at 180, two and a half and stop. And four and three quarters and stop. I am using the small side zigzag. I actually, I almost never use the larger side. Um, but I've, I know a lot of people like to use the larger side for our patterned paper and the smaller side for cardstock, but I end up just always using the smaller side. And I've had this stylus for years and it still works just as great. It's not wearing down at all. I think it actually gets better with age, to be honest. All right, I'm thinking to make sure, I think that's right. I'm trying to make this simpler because when I made the, um, the sample, I made it complicated on myself. All right, bringing in the paper trimmer here, we're gonna do some diagonal cuts. And again, this is gonna be a little bit difficult to see with the template, I'm so sorry, but we're gonna go from the bottom of, so we've got our short section at the top, and we did these little three quarter inch score lines. So the one that's two and a half and one at four and three quarters, strictly for a guideline for us to cut the diagonal. So we're actually gonna cut on the diagonal. Let me just show you with the template from, trying to catch the light here, from that short score line that we made on the diagonal down to that next horizontal score line. We're gonna be able to do that on the trimmer. So I'm lining up those. And what's really great about the trimmer is we can see right in the cutting channel where our sort of intersection is. So I like to line up the bottom one. That's the easiest one to line up. And I'm eyeballing this part here but you should also be able to confirm that once you close the cutting arm. And I'm gonna cut, but I'm gonna stop right at where that short score line is. Okay, so we've just done that all in one fell swoop. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side again from this score line on an angle to that short score line. Again, the score line is just to show us where to stop and it gives us that, um, it drops this down just a little bit so that we've got sort of an overlap from the base and the lid. So it, it creates this really cool box. So again, score line, I'm eyeballing it here. You can also do this with a pair of scissors, just cut. But because this is kind of a bigger stretch, I like to use the paper trimmer here and always go less than you need to. You can always go more, you can't go less. Okay, so we've done that. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other piece. That looks good. There we go. It's hard to see with all the lights on. <laughs> all right, so there we go. We've done those. Get the paper trimmer out of here. And grabbing my paper snips. All right, let's leave these alone for a minute. We are going to come in. I'm going to turn it sideways. We've got these diagonal pieces here on the right side. I'm going to come up that vertical score line and stop, we're gonna go past that short one and stop right there at the center. Like that. But then I'm gonna remove this section and this is a great scrap piece to be able to get a punch out of or um, you could even use this. Yeah, you could use this. We're gonna end up doing two and an eighth inch squares for the mini card front. So you could use, at least get one of these two and one eighth inch squares out of that. So don't waste your card stock. Especially when I usually have like a, not a specific size limit in mind, but I don't keep all my scraps. If they're too tiny, it's not worth it. But this would be a scrap that I would save. All 
again, so there's two of our, we're actually, this is gonna be perfect because you're gonna have four of these. Perfect to cut down to two and, two and one eighth by two and one eighth. All right, so we've now got this weird looking channel here. It's the mechanism, there is a method to my madness. This is gonna help us put this box together. Now on this piece, we're gonna make a decision here where I'm gonna then come in, I'm just gonna fold this out of my way. I'm gonna cut and cut. Now we're gonna to wanna to keep this tab here. We're gonna need that. So we can cut here and then cut like so, okay? So we'll just come in and then I like to, of course I forgot to fold and burnish on everything. Let's do that now. Always easier to fold and burnish when you haven't cut anything yet. These pieces are gonna look almost identical, but I will show you the slight minor difference. And this way, this looks like, a, uh, what do you think? A superhero with a cape. That's what I'm seeing right now. <laughs> what do you think, Brian? Looks like an arrow. An arrow spaceship something weird like that right uh, all right so we're gonna also come in and do some notching here we can leave these diagonal pieces alone I'm gonna fold that out of the way come in and notch this piece and if you want to make these tabs smaller you certainly can that's sort of where I had complicated it before but this large piece is just fine so we've got that and this piece if you remember from the succulent candle one we can notch that one slightly, but this one we've got to go at more of a like 45 degree angle here. And that is because we're ultimately going to glue that to this piece and we don't want that hanging over the edge here. You can eyeball it or you can not trim it at all until you've adhered it and then trim it that way. But it is about a 45 degree angle like so. Okay, so this piece is ready to be put together. This is gonna actually end up, the one that has the tabs here, this is gonna end up being the base because we're gonna have that three quarter inch edge popping up so that the cards don't fall out, okay? So that'll be the bottom. We won't adhere any card stock to this one, but I'm gonna wait to put this one together until we finish this piece. Now, we're gonna repeat the same thing as I'm throwing my scissors around. Removing this big section that we can save for our mini card, card fronts. This would be a great gift too to give someone a set of cards or it's a cute little thing to throw in your handbag or have in your car and just refill it with a stash of cards as you go about your day. Now, on this side, we are gonna do the exact same thing except we don't need the two tabs. This centerpiece is actually going to become our tab. So I'm just gonna cut up on either side of that and then we can remove the rest. This whole piece we're taking away. And I'm just kind of getting my scissors up in there so I don't have to cut too far. Didn't, oops, I didn't cut far enough there. There we go. And then on this piece, we're just gonna miter cut or notch that slightly. We're gonna repeat the same thing on these, right? So we're coming in, slightly notching, and again, I forgot to burnish. Brian's nodding his head because he already knew. <laughs> and then the 45 degree angle here. Same spiel there. All right, so get these big pieces we're gonna save. Again, trim those ones down to the two and one eighth by two and one eighth. You can probably get a punch out of these pieces. They look like little sailboats too. Clean up my mess here. Come on in and burnish. 
Hopefully when I record the video, I will remember to burnish. I love working with Poppy Parade cardstock. The color I love, but it's also kind of a, it's not a heavier weight cardstock, but I think you may have noticed, and I think I've said this before, some of our dyes, like I feel like the greens are usually almost like a softer texture. I think the dye does something to the paper itself. I cut, um, I cut right down the middle, Nita. That's a great question. For this project, I cut right down the middle. So these look almost identical with the exception of these two tabs. Okay, this piece we're not going to have to do anything to right this minute, but this piece, let's go ahead and adhere our designer series paper. So the mechanism to do that, I've cut two pieces from Pattern Party, and these measure three and one eighth by three. Okay, so they're a little bit longer on one side than the other. So three and one eighth by three. Now on the three inch side, I'm going to come down the left side and make a little tick mark at 5 eighths. And this piece, I'm going to come down the right side and make a little tick mark at 5 eighths. So I'm going to turn them this way. Actually, doesn't matter. To, well, let's go this way. <laughs> All right, so 5 eighths. I've got a little pencil here lining up my ruler. So I'm coming down 5 eighths and I'll make a little tick mark. What did I do differently here? Let's see this way. All right, so here we're going to do five eighths on this side. So we came down five eighths down the left, five eighths down the right. And we're going to use the paper trimmer and cut from the tick mark on the diagonal down to this corner. And that's going to give us the perfect angle to adhere to the card box lid. So I'm lining up the corner to the tick mark and cut. So I have a piece that looks like this. The other one, we wanted to do it in the opposite direction. Oh, so what I did with the, I did the, I cut two pieces the same way. And then what happened is I couldn't, it didn't fit on the other side. I would have had to flip the paper. So that's why we're switching the sides that we're doing that five eighths of an inch. So you learn from my mistakes. <laughs> There's only win or learn, right? Not win or lose, win or learn. All right, so we got those two pieces. And again, this is adhering to the piece that does not have the tabs here. So this piece will go here and it should be a nice, perfect angle. Now, if you still have a little pencil mark yet left, just come on in and erase that. Easier to do this now um, before you put the box together. So I love using liquid glue. It's my favorite because I can slide things into place. The diagonal uh, pattern is throwing me off here because of course we cut, I think I cut it at the wrong this one, I probably should have rotated the paper. See how much cooler this one looks because of the stripes? Now, the same thing with that one. So you may want to consider that. If you use the same paper, <laughs> consider the orientation of your stripes. All right, so this one looks good. Oh, I know I forgot to tell you guys, Papa Pixie's coming to visit us tomorrow for the week. Um, we have not seen him since Thanksgiving of 2019, so we're excited to see him. He's driving up from Florida tomorrow, so I think he planned that so he didn't have to, because so, he knows I would have made him come on camera to say hi to y'all. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's strategically coming Thursday and leaving Wednesday, I think. So he's going to miss next week, too. Maybe I can talk him into the 200th episode. Doubtful. All right. So we've, we're going to now adhere these two pieces together. It's going to go like so. Now, we had to do two pieces here because we didn't have a piece of cardstock big enough for this. So we're going to trick this a little bit. And I'm going to take liquid glue. 
and we're just going to put liquid glue right here on this tab. I'm squeezing too hard. There we go. And lining up. You don't want to go past the score line, but you're pretty much, whoops, lining up these score lines. So we're going to have this big long piece. It's so much easier to do this now than after it's put together. Ask me how. <laughs> All right. Almost didn't even see where that seam was. All right, so that's the big thing here. We're gonna take some tear and tape now because it's easiest. And we're gonna line up the tear and tape on to these narrower sections. I'm just going right up to the score line and don't worry, you're gonna have some tear and tape hanging, hanging over the edge there. You can just come in and trim it off with your paper snips. And if your paper snips get gunky, just use some alcohol pads and you can clean those right up. Just don't cut yourself. Right, there's those. And then I'm actually gonna do liquid glue on these tabs. So let's do that part next. We'll start with the tiny ones. And we're lining up this score line with this cut edge right here. And this is forming that front sort of lip of the box so the cards don't fall out. Just take your time. That liquid glue lets you get that. It's kind of a, not a tight fit, but you want to make sure that those get, that gets lined up just right. Kind of like Goldilocks, right? <laughs> just right. Again, just lining up, just take your time to get that lined right up. If you got a little bit of extra glue like I do squeezing out, just wipe that away with your finger. And you won't even notice. All right. Probably going to wish I didn't do that first. We're going to learn right here. <laughs> All right, so tear and tape. Let me put the glue away. Yeah, see, I'm, I should have waited to do that little tab. I don't have a flat surface to get the backing off here. Anything that's hanging over on itself, just fold it back. Or again, you could trim it away. We can do that with this one though. I don't know what I would do without the take your pick tool. It took me a while to fall in love with it from our old paper piercing tool. Um, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to line up this score line with this cut edge to start to form our little diagonal, I don't even know what to call this yet, diagonal closure card box, mini card box. <laughs> Brian will help me with the right words. So now with tear and tape, you don't get really much of a chance to fix that. So make sure you get it lined up just before you put it down. Again, we're lining up this edge with that score line. And we are just about done with that box. I hear pitter patter of feet upstairs. All right, so there is the box. This goes on the inside, that goes on the outside. As I'm holding it off camera here, can you see that? <laughs> So there we go. It's kind of a little bit of a clamshell box here. Cute little closure. So let's go ahead and make our cards. Now again, this is a naked box, I think. I think it needs some stamping or something. So you'll probably see that on Friday's video. I'll jazz it up between now and then. Let's make the cards here. Um, I've got four pieces of the thick basic white and these measure three by six. I'm going to score those right in half at three inches. And you can use your paper trimmer or your simply score, whichever you prefer. So three inches right down the middle. Already set up my sentiment on the Stamparatus. So three, three, and three. I'm going to wait to burnish those till we've done stamping. 
We've got the Stamparatus and Poppy Parade. And I do like to grab the stamp set and put it right underneath. That sort of prevents the stamps from being on an angle. I know you're getting blinded by the light here, but it helps me not get ink everywhere with my ink pad. So now this is the valley side of the score line. I'm going to flip the cardstock over, okay? Because we're going to stamp on the inside. We'll do that to all four of these. This is a red rubber stamp. So I only thing that I have in here is my stamp and storage magnet pad. Um, you don't want the foam pad from Stampin' Up when you're using red rubber because it's already got foam on the stamp itself. I do love this sentiment. The best thing about today is you. Trina, oh my gosh, I have begged them in our, um, we have a, I, the sandbox is what we call it. And I have asked them for a little mini one. I hope they do because so many of the things I create would only need that space, but yeah, great suggestion. One can hope <laughs> that, and I would love something to do diagonal score lines again. I actually thought what would be really cool is like a reversible scoreboard, one side straight lines, one side diagonal. Are you looking for the Simply Scored? Oh, the box. All right, so we got those four stamped. That's the only stamping for this project. Stamparatus makes it easy to make a whole bunch. And we'll come in now and fold and burnish. I like to burnish on the back side of the cards because sometimes you get a little bit of a shiny, uh, shiny look to that edge from the burnishing. So I always try to do that on the back side. I don't know if anybody else does that. You can't really see it on the white, but you can see it sometimes on the colored cardstock. So those are the bases. Now we're gonna do, I'm gonna use a little bit of contraband here just for to save us some time. I've cut a piece of our basic white, not the thick, but the regular basic white, four and a quarter by four and a quarter. That's enough space for us to get all four of those frames on here. And normally I would use the Stampin' Up! adhesive sheets, but this is the Creative Station Light, the Xyron. You know, it turns all of your cardstock into a sticker. So we're just gonna use that tonight. And no, it is not linked on my favorites page because we have adhesive sheets in the catalog. <laughs> so I don't want to contradict that. But what's great is it's, this is for the lazy stamper in myself. I, um, I don't want to fuss with the <laughs> adhesive sheets, but basically what this does is turns that piece of basic white into a big giant sticker. All right. So the mag, so Elizabeth, the magnetic sheet or the, yeah, I think that's what it's called. The magnet card from a stamp and storage. Um, sometimes when you're stamping close to the hinge, you don't get as good of a stamp impression. And so that little magnet card, it's really thin, but it's pretty much like their magnet cards for, um, actually it's thinner, but like the magnet cards for the dies that I love from Stampin' Storage, it just gives a little bit of extra oomph to it. So I get a really good stamp impression close to the hinge. So I just always have that in my Stamparatus. All right, so we're gonna take all four of these awesome frames. And let's grab the, the giant stamp and cut and emboss machine. It's not giant, but after you've used the mini for a while, it feels giant. And we're gonna do cutting plate one and two or I should say base plate, one, two, and then one of the three cutting plates. And then let's get this lined up here. I try not to put these right on top of each other. So they've got a little bit of space to shift if they need to, hence the four and a quarter. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna put it at a little bit of an angle so that we don't get speed bumps along the way. 
run that through. For these, I like to go forwards and backwards because we've got that adhesive sheet back there. Get this goodness out. All right, so this part is real easy. These are basically four stickers that we've created. And we're gonna pop out the big pieces. Everything should have cut through perfectly. We're gonna make a mess here. All right, so there's one. How cute is that? Oh my gosh, I love this bundle. This is one of my favorites. And if you need a little bit of help, just take your take your pick tool. Pop that out. That's frame number two. Those little ejection holes are awesome. Some of them are to, the, to eject the pieces you don't want, but there's frame number three. And so speed bumps sort of when it goes through the machine, Joanne, if you put a square or a rectangle die cut sort of straight on in the machine, you'll kind of hear the machine, it's not bad, but it just kind of does these speed bumps as it goes over those square edges if they go in straight on. But if you turn these at just a bit of an angle as it goes through the machine, you don't get those bumpy noises. <laughs> speed bumps are the best way I know how to describe that noise. All right, so we'll get most of the pieces out and then let me grab my little mini. <laughs> Brian probably heard my mini vacuum earlier, did you? It's awesome for those tiny pieces. This is linked on my favorites page. All right, so all those pieces are cleaned up and we've got these awesome frames. Now all we need to do is peel those off, the backings. And if you need to, because my nails don't cooperate these days, just gonna pull off that adhesive backing. You'll see the same thing with the Stampin' Up, or the Stampin' Up ones, but they're in strips. So you may have a bunch of tiny little strips that come off. Get it started there. I'm just getting these all peeled off. There we go. <laughs> I'm not used to having my nails done, you guys. There we go. I'm not sure which one of these patterns is my favorite, but they're all so cute. All right, now. I've got four pe oops, I knew that was gonna happen. Four pieces of the, I have not, Deanne. Um, I'm hoping that we may see one from Stampin' Up! in the future. But I've heard really good things about self-healing mats. All right, so I've cut four pieces of the pattern party, the same pattern we used on the box. And I cut these to just under one and seven eighths. One and seven eighths is just a hair too big for these. So I kind of go just under one and seven eighths and then we're just gonna layer these stickers right over the top of those. Kind of decide which way you want those diagonals to go. Oh, so cute. Make sure these are all going the same way, there we go. So quick and easy. We're gonna put a couple of rhinestones. Always hiding. Here we go. We'll do one there. Just 
just to give a little bit of bling and go inside the flowers or not. Then real quick, we'll adhere these to our two and one eighth inch square of Poppy Parade. These would be fun cards to sort of do things in batches and then sit on the couch with your, with your favorite binge worthy show like Outlander and make a bunch of mini cards. I still can't get Brian to watch Outlander. <laughs> but we just finished, what did we finish? Shadow and Bone. That was pretty good. Did you like Shadow and Bone? Yeah. He puts up with a lot of TV shows, don't you? <laughs> all right, then once these are adhered, all we need to do is do some dimensionals, pop them on our cards, and then we are done. There's that. For these, I like to do four. You don't really need one in the center. I'm gonna run out of dimensionals here. Can you repeat the song there, Fanny the vacuum? Can I repeat what? Oh yeah, the vacuum is listed on my favorites page at thepaperpixie.com slash favorites. Can we go over the bundle stamp and dies? Yes, I will. The bundle is all squared up. Or sorry, all squared away is the bundle. That's the stamp set. And I forget the name of the dies. Squared something dies. I don't have them labeled. <laughs> but these are the dies, and I'm putting them upside down. But you've got the four frames. I've got some paper pieces to pop out there. The four awesome frames, and then you have these flowers that go with. So that goes with this one. This goes with that. The little trio goes with this one, and then these two flowers go with this one. Really, really cool bundle. And when you buy them bundled together, you get them at 10% off. And I'll tell you, I'll show you on the page. All squared away, page 117. These samples are awesome. So they've done the stamping with the stamp set and done the little quad of the frame. It's really, really cute. It's $45 for the bundle, 10% bundled savings. So love this bundle, 117 of the annual catalog. Pop off all of our dimensionals here. Get my glue out of the way. And I stuck those cards somewhere, didn't I? Yes, I did. So these were just centering. You do actually have some space for some of the sentiments in the stamp set if you want to put those on the front. It's dangerous to have dimensional backings removed. Let's go this way. Which way does that one go? This way. There we go. I'm going to grab four envelopes. Again, these come in packs of 50. So just to show you, we've got our four envelopes. I love these cards. Let me put those out so you can kind of see those all together. There's the cards. Here's the gift box. Does that one have the other cards in it? Yep. Okay. Here's the gift box or the card box. So we'll pick these four up. Pop those in. And then there is our diagonal mini card gift box featuring the all squared up, all squared away bundle 
and the Pattern Party Designer Series paper. So thank you. All right, let's do Prize Patrol. You guys have been so patient. I hear my fan is like going crazy right now. All right, let's go to, let me get this one ready to go. I didn't tee it up ahead of time. Start collecting comments. All right, so here's the story with Price Patrol. Actually, let me show you the stamp set. Let me grab that really quick. We're doing the stamp set Simply Succulents. So to participate in Prize Patrol, US residents only, I ship within the US, hashtag Prize Patrol. Leave that in the comments, whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook. And I will choose two winners from those of you leaving hashtag Prize Patrol. Make sure you include the hashtag and no spaces and make sure you spell it correctly. That's how you'll be entered to win. I'm gonna get this teed up to share. We're gonna share a tab and this guy, share. And we'll bring this guy in. I'm gonna flip that. We're gonna watch your entries come in. I'm gonna give you a few moments to enter and then we'll select two winners. Again, free shipping tomorrow. How amazing is that? So orders of $50 or more at uh, stampinup.com. Uh, you'll receive free shipping, which is amazing. And the more you spend, the more you'll save on shipping because um, orders over, let's see, up to $69.50, shipping's normally $6.95. After that, it's 10% of your order, so you can really save. And who doesn't love free shipping? So that's tomorrow, and that's from mid 12 a.m. Mountain Time to 11.59 p.m. Mountain Time. Free shipping orders of $50 or more. The easiest way to shop with me is at thepaperpixie.com slash shop. And let's see, next week is episode 200. We're trying to think of what we're going to do kind of fun next week. Maybe we'll double the prize patrol. I haven't decided yet, so it'll be a surprise. Next week I'll be live at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time for episode 200. And I'm going to go ahead and choose our first winner. So let me, <clears throat> let's see. I take this off. You all know what to do there. We're going to draw winner number one. Here we go. Good luck. Not, you're not, not everyone's going to see their name. This totally randomly will choose a winner. Everybody has a chance to win. Yay! Stampin' with love. All right, let me get my post-it note here. You'll have to, when you, um, let me go back. So... To claim your prize patrol, Stampin' with Love, just go to thepaperpixie.com slash prize patrol and um, I will, you'll, I'll, I'll see what your name is then. <laughs> All right, so congratulations. Now winner number two, here we go. Draw again. I love when it starts to slow down. The confetti's fun. Yay, Mary Walk! Congratulations! All right, so congratulations to Stampin' with Love and Mary Manly Walk. That is awesome. All right, let me go ahead and stop sharing here. And claim your prize patrol at thepaperpixie.com slash prize patrol. I'll throw in a handmade card from my stash with that and get those in the mail to you. I hope you all have a wonderful and blessed week. I hope you take advantage of free shipping tomorrow. Reach out with any questions. The mini cards will post to my blog tomorrow. And the card box will post to my blog on Friday at thepaperpixie.com. Thanks for joining me. Have a wonderful and blessed week. I'm going to enjoy some time with my dad and I will see you next Wednesday for episode 200. Thank you. Take good care. Bye.